All right, if any of you have been paying attention to this build at all, and I, saw this and I know most of you haven't because of some of the questions I get, but then I understand people skip through the videos, so you miss a whole lot of stuff, and that's fine. You do what you want to do. It's your world. But if you've been watching these videos and following, you know I've got to put this cross brace in there. That's a DSE cross brace for a quadrilink suspension system, which I've got the rear end over there. I've got all the goodies and all that. That's a bad mother. Yeah, we, we know what the next word comes up is. I'm going to say I said it yesterday, though, didn't I? So I try to make it somewhat user friendly. I know, I, you know. Like they always say, you can't make everybody happy, but you can piss everyone off. That's that is the freaking truth. You can definitely piss everyone off. And so, back to where I was headed. So while I got this set up here. I thought, you know what? I'll I'll just go ahead and draw out my dimensions for this box. And it's kind of tricky because the way it slopes down at an angle. So I got to looking at the instructions and they're not all that clear on that they give you this little diagram right here <laughs> and they say to go from this little crease back here uh, and it says 34 and a quarter inches up and then you make the scribe line from this little okay I can't even really tell what that is I mean I'm kind of like okay where is that well I figured it out it's this area right here so if any of you guys are confused about that this is what you do. Take your straight edge, sit it right into that little little deal right there, and you run it right up to 34 and a quarter. Then you scribe your little line. Same thing on that side. Run it straight up, scribe your little line. Now here's where it gets a little tricky because I was like, all right. So the box is six inches wide, so I have to come back six inches wide. Well, this is at an angle, so if you go six inches down, that's not six inches wide, if you understand the way the geometry works, which I really don't, but I figured it out that, hey, this doesn't really look right. So here's, what, here's what's going on. What they tell you to do is this. Let me take my... Look, this this little dude right here is amazing. Look this thing all bends all different ways and almost you can it's it's awesome. If you don't have one, you know how I would say get one. So anyway, so you come from this edge and I thought, alright, so and I'm of course I'm not looking at the directions, but it doesn't really tell you in there, at least that I saw. So I take my little straight edge here and I go, okay. Let's just go from that scribed line six inches down. Well, it comes to this line right here. Well, now I throw the box up there, and I'm like, no, that box comes way out here. That that ain't going to work. Well, duh, the angle of the thing. Well, it, what it tells you in the video, if you watch the video, basically scribe your line all the way up here, and then take it on your frame rail edge here and run it from that line that you got there and run it back six inches. So six inches right here is right here. Well, I took my laser and I set it up. And, well, run it down through here. Made my my scribe line. So it's going to be somewhere in here. So what I'll probably end up doing is cutting back just a little bit in here and grinding it to fit. That way I don't overcut it because you can't put metal back. So I'm pretty sure that's going to work perfect. I'm going to set this up and and get it right where it needs to be. I'm jumping a little bit ahead right here. I'm just getting these lines scribed out. That way it's kind of a done deal. Well, I got it sitting here like this. I am going to uh, go ahead and weld all this down together permanently and all that before I start cutting all that out. That way everything's rigid and where it's supposed to stay and all that. And that way also I'll probably end up cutting these completely out so where that box actually sits on the frame because I'm going to weld it to the frame. I'm not just going to weld it to this flimsy ass 20 ass 20, 20 ass 20 gauge piece of steel. I mean what purpose would that? That's a, that's a heavy duty 8th inch thick plate steel cross brace. It's super strong. It's going to help support all this. 
and just putting it to this so so just think about stuff like that when you're doing your thing if you're doing this because they're going to probably have you weld it to that i don't know that for sure but anyway i'll cut this stuff out it'll go straight down to this and it will weld solid to this so that's where i'm at with that i figured kind of take you along on that one uh I may not have to take all, you know, I'll take some of this out. I may have to take all of it out. Probably will. But, uh, yeah, and there may be a little gap in there. I'll have to figure that out. However that goes down, uh, I'll try to leave metal in here. That way I can weld that up to the side of the box, basically, or however it works out. But we'll figure it out. Uh, we got this. All right, I'm doing a little practice, and i got to weld this bad boy right here. This thing is uh, 10 gauge steel, and so I got to weld it to 20 gauge sheet metal. So, do a little practicing. So, what I've got here is I got a piece of uh, thick steel. This is actually, I actually got this turned down a little bit because this is about eighth inch uh, plate, I believe, and then the 20 gauge steel. So, I turned my machine down just a little bit. I have to turn it up a little bit when I go to doing that but this is the thickest piece I had in my shop to practice with so basically I just ground this back you can see this is a piece of my old Camaro just 20 gauge sheet uh, tack this on the back sides there that way I didn't have a big heat heat sink so, so it'll be kind of like what it will be uh, when I'm welding that through my trunk panel over there because that's that cross brace and I've got to weld all that cross bracing uh, to to that so a little more tricky than just welding um, you need to penetrate this the heavy steel but you just barely want to get a hold of this thin stuff so my understanding is you're gonna you're going to spend more time up here and then just drop down and spend more time and then drop down and spend more time so you're so you're hesitating just a little bit at the top and then dropping and then dropping um, so I'm going to go ahead and try this and see what we come up with see how good this works and I'll set you up on the camera tripod wherever the hell it went all right here we go let's see what happens I've seen this done on TV once so let's see how this works out I'm going to start off with a little series of tacks just to get this thing to hold itself. And whatever I do with my glove, people call, I end up getting sidetracked and I carry stuff off. There it is. So, alright. I'm going to do a little tack down. I would just do a bunch of little beads, but this is thick material here. So it's not going to penetrate that with just a bunch of little beads. Now it's going to penetrate this, but it won't with that. So I have to actually continuously weld this, but I have to stay off of this thin stuff and more onto the thick stuff. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to try to go, matter of fact, yeah, I'm going to try to go this whole one. Just, that's, that's, geez, I don't know how far that is. Just let's take a look. Uh, no, we don't want millimeters. That's about two inches and almost two and a half inches long. So it's pretty, pretty good. Way more than you'd want to do normally. Normally you want to go by the inch, inch and a half ish or somewhere in that area. So we'll go ahead and give this a shot and see if I blow a hole through this or what happens. But I got to get good at this because I got to do my other thing. So. Alright, 
so I needed to stay up higher longer. I came down a little too and dwelled just a little bit too long and it ate away right there. So no big deal. Um, I said I'm kind of figuring this out. I can, I can fill that back in no problem. But so maybe also I might not want to go quite as maybe put a tack in between that two and a half inches about right in here. And then maybe go that shorter distance at continuous and see what happens. Now that's still going to be pretty hot so I'll jump over here and uh, I think I'm going to try to stay up higher up here a little bit longer and then come down because like I said I was doing real good until all of a sudden I just dwelled a little too long there. So we'll see what happens over here. See if I can't keep it up top a little better. <laughs> she ran out of luck. You don't get so much, right? Which uh, I'm happy with that. I mean, that's uh, that's a good. Uh, that's old. That's almost two inches. That's almost two inches. So. If I was to do that and then jump over somewhere else and do it kind of like what we normally do, uh, I think I'll be just fine. Uh, this is super, this is this is 20 gauge steel, guys, so, and that's, uh, what did I say, 11 gauge or 8 inch thick or something like that. So, not too bad. Um, we'll keep going here. That would be about probably about where you'd want to go with it. Um, and just keep filling in like that. Like I said, and I can fix that. It'll, it'll, we'll fix it right now. Dundee. So, I think the main thing you want to worry about is maybe warping your sheet metal. So you may want to just do smaller runs like this, like I said, inch, inch and a half tops. And, uh, you know, stack, maybe, maybe stack your, your tacks an inch and a half, like make you a little line and, and say inch and a half or however far apart. And then go from there and then fill it all in because we want at least me I want it to be pretty but I want it to penetrate and I want it to do what it's supposed to do so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this middle part in here and uh, see how that works out that's quite a bit that's that's a little farther than that may be a little more than an inch and a half I don't know but I'm gonna concentrate on staying up on this heavy plate Boom, just like that. Nice and flat. Uh, bet it penetrated really nice. Grab a little of that.
Uh, same with this. I'll move this around a little bit. Hopefully that will look. Yeah. So if it's showing, I've got a pretty good hole here. And you can fill that in because you want to make let your, your metal cool down a little bit. But you don't need a backer and all that kind of stuff. Especially on this. Uh, you just use your metal, use your heavier metal and let gravity do its thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. That's I don't know how big that is, probably a quarter inch hole. Done that a little better, kind of screwed that up, but we filled it in and it's all good. And again, I'm just practicing here trying to get this uh, get this to where I can you know do it well enough that I'm happy doing it on my final project over here and uh so yeah, I got this tack to that. I don't think it's yeah, this tack to that one too. Let me break these tacks loose and see. Let's see what we got. Alright, so there you go. You can see. Put this back up this way. Bring you in close. Oh. So that's what we're looking like. Not beautiful, beautiful, but not bad. Um, and again, that's some thick ass metal in it. And you can see it's penetrating through. So I spent enough time dwelling to actually have it come through. And then you can see on the uh, sheet metal how it's coming through. And man, that was, you can tell right there I was getting hot. It was starting to want to bubble through completely. But, yeah. I'll keep working with that and we'll get, we'll see how good we can get with it. Like I said, I ain't stacking no dimes, but uh, this is MIG, not TIG, so I don't have a TIG welder. Started burning away at some of my paint. That's what was stinking. So yeah, that's where I filled that hole in. See that big old dumb looking thing there. But it filled it in. I just have to grind that down and it'd be fine. All right. Well, that's it for now. I'm going to the house. <laughs>